action. Camera one, zoom out. Ready camera two, take two. Hello and welcome to Cisco Chat Live. I'm Sylvia Spiva, Cisco DevNet Community Manager. This is a very special time of the year for us. We're getting ready for DevNet Create. So let's meet Team DevNet. So I'm Alex Pools. I lead uh, the Global Partner Engineering Team. So I look after our wonderful like 56,000 partner engineers that exist uh, out in the world, many of which are going to be at DevNet Create. Hi, I'm Chloe Kaufman. I am a part of Team DevNet, and I work specifically on our business development team within Cisco DevNet. I'll talk more about that in a bit. I am Kareem Iskander. I'm part of uh, the DevNet team and a developer advocate here uh, with DevNet. Um, I work with all the developers. Uh, I'm focused on EN Enterprise Networking and uh, specifically DNA Center. So if you have any questions, if you're looking to play with the APIs, talk to me. Hi, uh, my name's Matt Denapoli. I'm also a developer advocate with DevNet, but I focus on Meraki. <laughs> hey, I am uh, John McDonough. I'm also a developer advocate, and I focus on data center automation. Hey, everybody. My name is Diaria Henry. I am a marketing manager uh, for the DevNet team. So I focus on uh, working with a lot of our events, a lot of our developer advocates, and just making things happen with different campaigns. Hello, I am Mandy Whaley. Um, I am our Senior Director of Developer Experience and Developer Advocacy. So I get to work with all these fun uh, people that are on this call and really figure out different ways that we can help enable our Cisco developer community. It's so exciting to be hosting our third DevNet Create. And we're going to really focus on the community and partners. Partners have helped us build this community, so we're going to learn more about that. But uh, we know that we're having a lot of you join us from around the world on Facebook, YouTube, on Cisco.com. So for those of you who haven't heard about it, we're going to go back to Mandy, and we're going to ask Mandy. Mandy, what is DevNet Create? Thanks, Soya. So is the conference that we have for our developer community. So all of the developers and engineers that are building solutions on top of Cisco platforms, this is a place where they can get together, they can meet, they can exchange ideas, they can learn. We have tons of hands-on activities where people can start coding and start building solutions at the, at the actual event. Uh, at this event, we have a big focus on community. So over um, half the talks are uh, presented by the community members, the real engineers, you know, building the solutions and sharing lessons learned, sharing tips and tricks that they have figured out and talking about, about their work. So it's a very practitioner led, very hands on event where we can get our community together and exchange ideas and really think about what we want to build during this next year. And we also do a lot of streaming of the content so people can join in from anywhere and, um, and get a lot of the same benefit as actually being there in person. Um, now I'd like to turn it over to some of our developer advocates to talk more about some of the specific content that we're going to have at the event. So John, you want to talk about some of our automation topics? Uh, sure, Mandy. I, I would love to. So we have um, a number of hands-on workshops at uh, DevNet Create, and you know this is our third year, right? We started in, in uh, 2017. You know, and back then we had um, workshops and talks and, uh, and we had this thing called mini hacks where people would get their hands on. We had a little over 40 workshops. And then in 2018, we went to about um, 55 workshops. And these were 45 minute workshops where you get your hands on and you, you know, learn everything about, you know, that the, that the presenters were putting out there for you, whether it the tools, the back end Cisco technologies, if they were using something like that. And then in 2017, or excuse me, in 2019, we have uh, just about 40 workshops, and but they're 90 minutes long. So you're getting twice the amount of education, you're getting twice the amount of tools, twice the amount of the developer experience that's standing in front of you, you know, putting their information and experience out to you. So it's going to be really, really great. And you know, this year we have talks and workshops like we've had in the previous years, but we also have the lightning talks. You want to get a little snippet of something, you know, a couple of minutes while you're drinking some coffee or eating a snack. You know, DevNet Create, it's not just the talks, the workshops, the lightning talks, and the demos. It's 
the food. I mean, just come for the food. That's great stuff too. <laughs> but we have, um, this is our second year we're doing it. It's, it's called Camp Create. And I want to pass it over to Matt Napoli so he can tell you all about Camp Create and what's happening with that. Uh, thanks, John. Um, I'd love to talk about Camp Create uh, because I would like to say that it was my idea. <laughs> uh, so as John mentioned, as John mentioned, this is the, the third year we've been doing DevNet Create, uh, but it's only the second year that we've been doing Camp Create. And uh, the, the driver for that was we've called DevNet Create, DevNet Create, uh, but we were uh, not allowing people to actually build too much. Um, John mentioned the mini hacks from the first year, but those were things that we were kind of laying out and having people build that were kind of prescribed. What we wanted to do with Camp Create last year uh, was give people some use cases or problems that they had to solve, provide them with the technologies and let them work through their own coding languages, their own methodologies, um, become exposed to new tools, uh, collaborate with new people that they aren't used to working with. And um, the response was overwhelming, actually. Uh, we had 30 participants last year um, that had that we took from a pool of, I, I believe, uh, 50 registrants. Uh, we had almost 60 registrants this year. Unfortunately, we could only keep it at 30 again, so we're, or we're still working in that space. Um, and uh, again, we're working through um, problem problem uh, statements, use cases, uh, focusing on uh, physical security with uh, cameras and facial recognition. Uh, we're exploring IoT problem solving with uh, machine learning platforms um, in the new UCS uh, 480 with uh, the machine learning in, uh, NVIDIA GPU unit. Uh, we're also looking at uh, network automation tools and being able to deploy, uh, being able to provide zero touch provisioning for um, for networks. Um, what else do we have? Uh, we're also adding in, this is a, a fan favorite location uh, services for Wi-Fi networks. You'll be seeing a, a lot of that through the DevNet, uh, through DevNet Create and Camp Create. On top of all that, the big thing about Camp Create is about camaraderie. Um, like I said, these are, these are people that haven't worked together before. They come from all kinds of backgrounds, um, all kinds of experiences. We have some developers, we have some network engineers, we have systems analysts. Um, and they're all kind of co-mingling and learning about what each other does. And, and that has proved to be a wonderful experience for the attendees. Um, the big thing that we also do is uh, we also add in a team or a uh, Camp Create dinner, a uh, nice little Italian place across the street that we'll be uh, having that at. And um, there's always fun swag and everything. So for next year, if you're interested, uh, please sign up and, and try out Camp Create. Hopefully, we can uh, expand expand it and make it you know a large a larger part of the DevNet Create experience. Thanks, Sylvia. Fantastic and great idea, Matt. Camp Create <laughs> has sold out this year, last year. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, let us know where you're watching from and what topics interest you. You've got the experts here to answer your questions. We want to know, are you into collab, IoT, you know, data center? And if you can't get to Silicon Valley to participate in Camp Create here, then what city would you like us to bring it to? We definitely want to make sure that we're listening. So ask your questions. And you'll also get a chance to have some um, of your questions read on air. So start asking them now. Now here back in the studio, Alex, thank you so much for joining us today. I want to know more about why you see that it's important for partners, Cisco partners, to be part of the DevNet community and specifically participate in DevNet Create. So before I answer that, can I make a quick suggestion? Sure. Uh, next time we do this session, I want to do it at John's house. Oh. <laughs> I'm digging like the drum set and the guitar and everything else in the background. That's awesome. Put up. Yeah, so uh, back to you, back to the question. Um, you know, Cisco's always traditionally been a great infrastructure company, and, and prior to DevNet, um, but now we're becoming really a great software company. And I don't know of any other event for our partners that actually bridges the net dev side and the app dev side of programmability. And for a lot of our partners, I think it's, it's a, an amazing opportunity. We've had tremendous partner turnout at the previous sessions, and uh, I, I honestly, I, in terms of where we are as a company, and I think where the industry is going, this is the premier event for our partners to go to. So uh, I look forward to a lot of our partners are going to be there and encourage any of those that are maybe on the fence right now to sign up and, 
and pursue that. Plus, there's some really cool things that you're going to hear about that you otherwise wouldn't, like our Cisco Innovation Challenge. So uh, one of the things that we decided on, it's actually the second iteration that we've run it, is we talk about how great our platforms are. We talk about how great our APIs are. And our partners are so creative, and they're really good at unlo uh, unleashing and unlocking the power of programmability on Cisco's platforms. But why not talk about it? Why not put our money where our mouth is? So last year, we gave away $100,000 cash live at Cisco's Partner Summit to um, any partner that we felt uh, could best create a solution leveraging Cisco's innovation and programmability uh, with their, ultimately, the, the ideas that they could come up with. And originally we thought maybe somebody would create like a, a bot or something small. Well, the winner last year, Alta Solutions, uh, Jose and his team did an amazing job. They actually created a connected cities platform that actually in Latin America they leveraged to bridge the gap across all kinds of different municipal services that were provided in the cities. and. Uh, it brought in multiple different vendors, and it actually worked across eight different Cisco product portfolios for, uh, uh, wow. of our pro uh, product portfolio. So it was, it was an amazing solution. It was an amazing innovation, and um, it worked so well that we're going to double it. So we're giving away $200,000 cash, and we're going to make that announcement as well. So first place, $200,000. Second place, $50,000. That's just an indicator just uh, from a Cisco perspective of how big we think this is. And uh, so you're going to hear a little bit more of that if you, uh, if you attend. If not, there'll be some stuff posted to developer.cisco.com. Uh, but in terms of our partnerships, I know, Chloe, you've been doing some great work with our ecosystem partnerships. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, one thing I would like to add that if you do go to DevNet Create, you'll get the chance to meet the past winner. Jose will be at DevNet Create, so that's pretty cool, too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I work on the business development team within Cisco DevNet. And so, what does that mean? So, we, you know, being at DevNet, we've, we're able to be the central location across all of Cisco, essentially, right? Because we work across all of our different technology business units um, and products and solutions. So what we found is being that central location, it makes sense that partners and you know, software developers are coming to us asking, how do we get into business with Cisco? How do we partner with Cisco? So our team works a lot with walking through those partners or potential partners, what that pathway, and I'm, I'm doing this upward progression because there is, it's kind of a stepping stone on what that pathway might look like for them and helping them to get onboarded at different stages along the way. So starting with, for example, Ecosystem Exchange, which is our online catalog of solutions built by partners, not just partners, consultants, Consultants, DSIs, all across the board, um, and it's our catalog where you can go as a customer and explore those solutions. Or as a partner, you can actually have those solutions shared across our entire community. So that's really cool. And we also work with the GPO team to, with the Solution Partner Program, so helping onboard in that sense. And also, DevNet owns the Solutions Plus Partner Program, which is our catalog that puts our partners onto the Cisco Global Price List, which is huge for our partner community. Um, but of course, none of this would function if we didn't have such a great partner community. And so I'm really fortunate to be on the team that gets to talk to these partners and potential partners. Um, I'm saying the word partner a lot, so I'm going to give maybe more of an example. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Casey Bleeker, who's my partner in crime, and I'm totally name dropping him because he has been in this seat before and he is an awesome person to work with. <laughs> um, so we had the chance to go to the GPU tech conference, which was in San Jose a few weeks ago. Um, and our job was very biz devy, um, which was to go out and just talk to people that were there and see if any of their solutions were something that maybe we could work with. Um, and we had this great opportunity to really geek out and see you know, this innovation that's happening in the AI machine learning space. And what you might or might not know is that Cisco actually in our data center portfolio have this great um, recently released C-Series server, which is the C480 ML, which has eight NVIDIA GPU um, chips inside of it. And so it is ready to do machine learning workloads. So we were going around talking to all these solution vendors and being like, let's validate on our hardware. Let's get these solutions out to our community of, of buyers and sellers. Um, and so that was really fun to be able to do. And so I'm geeking out a little bit. I want to tell you, if you come to DevNet Create, you can geek out a lot. Um, Casey will be there. 
whole team will be there. And I, I keep saying Casey because his Twitter handle is literally at Geek Bleak. So he mm -hmm. has geek in his name. Um, but yeah, it's been a great opportunity to be, you know, for us in DevNet to have that central location where our partners can come and to talk to us and where we can onboard. So I highly encourage uh, anyone out there who's potentially looking at building solutions with Cisco to reach out to our team. We're here to talk. You are totally geeking out. <laughs> but there's someone else who wants to geek out even more. Mandy, I hear you wanted to add something about well, the great work that our partners are doing with Cisco APIs and DevNet. Yeah, so one of the things I wanted to add was, um, you know, we're talking about the partners coming to the event, um, engineers, developers from our customers, and I wanted to give a little bit of more detail on some of the topics that we're going to be covering in some of the sessions. So I think DevNet Create is a very unique conference because we cover a lot of content starting from very beginner to advanced. So if you are um, you know, starting out with network automate and kind of starting to learn about APIs and maybe how to use Ansible and do some automation, we've got workshops and classes on that. We've also got um, very advanced application uh, focused courses around AR, VR, different things you can build on the platforms. It's also, um, our team is very passionate about APIs and we have a, a very strong track around API design and how to build APIs you know, in your own organization as well. So these are just some of the topics, you know, if you're wondering about how to get started with uh, Kubernetes or microservices or starting to work with APIs or starting to be either at the beginning or very advanced place in your network automation journey. Uh, DevNet Create has sessions that cover kind of all of those different topics. So um, that's one of the things we really like is that we get together all these people with different um, experience levels and get that conversation started between them at the event. <clears throat> so, and cool. One thing I want to remind the audience about is we all have Twitter handles and we all monitor them and we love getting questions. So as people are speaking um, and you see their name, their Twitter handle should appear. So feel free to tweet at any time and you know ask Mandy questions, ask Kareem questions. Make sure you ask Kareem a lot of questions. <laughs> uh, but what I wanted to really emphasize is if you're an established Cisco partner, then Alex is your guy. And so if you have any questions about how you can get one of these big paychecks from the partner organization, tweet at Alex, right? Peebles, yep. yep, that's your, your, uh, your Twitter handle should be showing up right there. And if you're a startup, if you know that you have an idea of something you want to do with Cisco APIs, but you don't think your company's big enough, Chloe can help you out. Yeah. So make sure you reach out to Chloe. And yeah, I wanted to add one thing that Mandy was saying, you know, the range of classes that we have at DevNet Create or, or content at DevNet Create. You know, I just mentioned a story of going out and trying to find new partners. Um, I want everyone to know that we also are want to take our partners, our established partners on this programmability journey with us. So if you are just starting out, we are there to support that as well and to help you implement that, that programmability practice in your, in your company. You know, this is a team that has great ideas. We know that Camp Create was Matt's idea. But now we're going to talk about how to get started. So Kareem, you're the man to tell us about how to get started if you don't know what a DevNet is. OK, so <laughs> thanks, Sylvia. So a couple of things that you can, you can, you know, you can get started with. Um, your best friend is developer.cisco.com. Um, go there and there are a couple assets for you but if you're looking to get started specifically with programmability and you know if you've never done um, anything with APIs before go to the start now page where we have a learning path for you where you could you know pick the technology that you're passionate about pick the technology that you'd like to learn more about and we're gonna walk you through the steps on you know what is uh, how, to, how to use Python what is um, the, the different APIs that are available for you um, and and then uh, we're kind of build on that. We tell you how long it's going to take, so you don't have, you know, you can dedicate an hour a day, you can dedicate 30 minutes a day, and you can just do some type of learning path. Um, if you're ready and you know you kind of are uh, aware of what's going on, you can jump on our learning labs. Um, you can go in and dig into the actual technology specific APIs, whether that's you know device level APIs or if you're looking to play with the Meraki APIs or something, and you can actually go and reserve a sandbox. So you don't actually have to have the infrastructure in place for you to do 
um, what we do. Uh, we provide you a free sandbox. Uh, that all comes with your developer, your DevNet account. So reserve a sandbox. And one of the great things, like if you know, if you're looking uh, to play with the latest uh, UCS that was released, this is this is an expensive unit to, for you to have laying around. To our sandbox team actually has that for you to go reserve and be able to run your AI ML code on a GPU um, without having to worry about having the infrastructure in place, right? So that's that's a, a great tool for our developers and for our community to essentially you know leverage. Um, and if you you know once you've gotten started and you're ready to build your product. Um, we have great examples for you in Code Exchange. So Code Exchange is essentially for um, our community to showcase what they've done, what they've learned with DevNet, what um, what people like myself, Matt, John, Mandy, even Chloe have built um, and showcased in you know in whether they went to Cisco Live and they've done it or something. So Code Exchange is theirs. But so we have a slew of of, of assets for you to go leverage. It all starts with developer.cisco.com. Uh, once you have an account, you can come to DevNet Create, and you can actually learn more and find out how you know how we have done all of what we've done in on that and showcased. So, wow! Like I said, tweet Kareem, and he will answer all your questions. <laughs> Thanks, so, uh, oh no, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, I want to make sure we hear from our amazing teammate Diaria, who is making sure everyone feels welcome at DevNet Create. So. Diaria, can you tell us more about all the community outreach you've been doing, particularly this year? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Sylvia. So this year, um, we had a unique opportunity. Um, looking looking around last year, uh, I was noticing that uh, as much as we've got different mind frames, I wanted to make sure that we as DevNet, as part of um, you know, Cisco, who really wants to make sure that everyone um, feels included and has an inclusive environment, I wanted to make sure that we were doing our part to reach out to different groups of people to participate in, in activities like DevNet Create. Uh, you know, the one thing I would say about this team is that it doesn't work unless you have people with very, very different mindsets, people with different backgrounds, um, people who are gonna make sure that we're approaching Approaching uh, innovation in a really awesome way. So this year, um, I asked. Well, I asked my boss and my boss's boss and the big boss if I could uh, start reaching out to a few of the groups. So I was able to reach out to some of the local professional organizations, well, national, national and international organizations, um, people like uh, NSBE, the National Society of Black Engineers, um, SASI, which is the Society of Asian Scientists and Engineers, and also a few of the Cisco groups, including uh, Conexion, which is our Latinx community within the company, as well as uh, Connected Black Professionals and our Early Career Network. And really the goal of that was to make sure that we're doing our part to evangelize the DevNet message inside of Cisco and outside of Cisco as well. Um, you know, because Cisco is traditionally a hardware company, it makes a big difference that as we're pushing towards software, that all of our engineers and salespeople and marketers and operations and everybody who's anybody really understands what DevNet has to offer and can take that information and use it to evangelize it to you know, differentiate with the rest of our partners. So it was really important to me that we did that uh, within our community. And then I had the opportunity actually to take it a step further and really take DevNet with me um, on a trip that I went on last year. I went on a service trip with an organization called Foundation of the World. And it was about 20 people um, from Cisco, from a couple of other companies. And we had the opportunity to teach um, voice over IP, to teach Meraki um, virtualization and have some uh, personal development. And we were able to impact the lives of 150 students in uh, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. So, you know, with that, um, you know, I had the help of my awesome teammates, um, people like our social folks, um, you know, our code exchanges, um, you know, it, DevNet has uh, a tool set that's really awesome because it's not just a one and done. So when you come to Camp Create or when you come to DevNet Create, it's not just a one and done and you get to learn and that's it. You really get the opportunity to go back into those sandboxes, to go back into the code exchange, um, to really go in and look and make sure that um, 
you know, you're, you're taking advantage of a learning opportunity. So, um, you know, it's, it's awesome that I've got, you know, all the great people on this call, um, all of our leadership that's been super supportive of some of the outreach that we've done. And, you know, this year we definitely started small, but we want to continue to make sure that we're reaching out to more women and to veterans and LGBTQ and, you know, all of the, you know, affinity groups that are out there, you know, DevNet, DevNet doesn't work unless we have a, a, a really inclusive environment. And I'm just grateful to work with a team that's, you know, just as passionate about it as I am and, you know, really, really willing to, to step up and do what we can to, to make sure that we invite folks out. So thanks, Sylvia. Thank you and keep up the great work. My favorite thing about, you know, my role as community manager is that we see success stories come in from every corner of the globe. We have a question from the audience, will DevNet Create ever come to India? So if you would like DevNet Create to come to somewhere closer to where you live, where you work, let us know. We are listening. And our amazing uh, social media manager, Julio, is monitoring and will let you know uh, what resources you can use if you can join us online. So until you can join us in person, make sure that you're making the most of the resources that you can use online. Now, as Diaria was saying, and, and as all of you have been saying, DevNet is for everyone. And we want to showcase the work that all of you do. So I have a question for Mandy about how we get to showcase the work that people have done in a very special way at DevNet Create. So Mandy, could you tell us more about our DevNet creators? Yes, absolutely. This is. Um... A program that we launched last year at our second DevNet Create, and it's called the DevNet Creator Awards. And these are awards for community contributions, the people who are working in our developer community and who are giving back every day to help that developer community. So we um, spend a lot of time, you know, looking at people who are answering questions and helping other people in the community troubleshoot and figure things out who are active in the forums and in our room. We also look for uh, people in the community who are writing a lot of code and sharing it with the community through code exchange. That's a, a very active way that people contribute. And then we also look for people who are just jumping in to this mission of learning these new skills and really taking them back to their organizations and leading change, you know, teaching their teams new things, uh, leading their teams to use new Cisco platforms like Cisco DNA Center and ACI and um, a lot of the new UCS APIs. So we're looking for people who contribute in all these different ways. It could be people who help make our docs better, who write that one utility script that everyone finds super useful and helps out the community in a huge way, or who are really motivators and change leaders within their organizations. So last year, we gave out our first five DevNet Creator Awards. And um, it was very exciting to see how the community embraced these creators and how they have really uh, been able to showcase their work and how we've been able to show some of the gratitude that we have for them for their activity in our community. So uh, on day one, we'll be announcing the new set of DevNet creators. And we want this to be you know, a, a group that grows every year. So each year we'll have our set of DevNet creator award winners and they are there to be resources for the community. They want to help. They're giving back. And so this is just our chance to show some, some gratitude for that. <clears throat> and Great. And, um, oh, sorry. No, and, and, and one of the things that, um, that it's great about uh, being a creator and uh, the giving back, back part that you were mentioning is basically uh, being able to showcase what these guys have done for the community. And the way to do that is through our code exchange. Again, I'm touching on that. I know uh, we talked about it, but it's, it's, really, um, it's a really great tool for our community members to, to showcase what, what, what we've done. And to me, that's... Um, that's very rewarding, right? Because we, we work day to day to, to make these APIs accessible, teach you about those APIs, um, but the end result, what, um, what you've accomplished, and um, that is big, right? So um, you don't have to be a partner. You don't have to be, you could be a, a student that's looking to move from just networking CCNA to programmability, and you could write a kick-ass, um, wrapper for an API. We want to see that, right? 
and we want to be able to showcase it and share it with our community members. So um, Code Exchange is the place to, to go. Um, I know I know there are a lot of contribution that um, happening. We push our partners to even you know uh, some of our uh, partners to to contribute some of their code there. Um, our um, our SEs are all over this. So um, again, it's a it's a really nice place for you to meet the community members, um, know who's you know the expert at what, um, because you're going to see their name there and even showcase what you have done uh, and potentially become a DevNet creator next year through it. Right? I'm so excited. This is, I can't believe DevNet Create is next week. So uh, I have a long list of things I need to do. <laughs> but uh, for those of you who will be joining us on site or online, or start now. Start getting ready for the conference now. And I want to take this back to John. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm so excited that I get to see John next week. I mean, who, who is isn't? It? Really? Yeah, who isn't, right? <laughs> um, but how, John, how do you recommend that our community members who will join us? in person and virtually get ready, what content do you recommend for them? OK, so I, I've been waiting to tell you about this. I'm so excited about uh, this year's DevNet Create. So here's the thing. Look at the agenda, <laughs> devnetcreate.io. How do you get ready? I mean, so many people come, they're like, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to go to? The agenda's out there, devnetcreate.io, and you can go and look at the workshops, the talks, the lightning demos, you know, all that stuff's out there. But here's the thing that you can also do. If you weren't there last year, or you weren't there the year before, there's videos online, and you can go and see, you know, previous year's talks. So I, I have a little bit of a personal anecdote. My kids would call it a humble brag. Maybe not the, the best thing, and people are going to make fun of me later. That's okay. So. This guy came to DevNet Create, and he worked for this company. I don't know if I can say their name, but he worked, this guy that worked at a company, people are going to be like, not a real guy, not a real company, John, you're making it up. Guy worked for the company, and he came to my talk, how to contribute to Ansible. Now, people are like, well, why would you talk about contributing to Ansible? You're a Cisco guy. Cisco doesn't do Ansible. I mean, we don't make it. We use it, right? So anyway, he comes to my talk because I'm an Ansible contributor. All right, humble brag. Ansible contributor, and so I gave this talk how to contribute. So the guy comes to my talk, and it was in the 300 seat arena, or, or you know, space. Every seat was taken, standing room only. People were lined up along the walls. People were sitting on the floor in front of me. If you can picture the scenario, this is what it was. And maybe there weren't that many people there, but there were people there. So this guy comes to the session. He listens intently, comes up afterwards and talks to me, you know, asks me some more questions, walks with me down the hallway, asks me some more questions, because that's the kind of dev knife person I am. We're going to walk and talk, and, and we're going to do some stuff. So what do you know? He writes some Ansible modules for his company. He contributes, contributes them to Ansible, and he, they get merged into Ansible. So now when you download Ansible from however you do it, if you do pip install Ansible or however you get it, if you do brew or whatever it may be, you're going to get modules that he wrote, you're going to get modules that I wrote, and you're going to get modules that other community contributors wrote, and they learned maybe at my session, just like this guy did, and it was fantastic. So really, really happy that this guy learned this. So what did he do to get ready? Well, for him, he really didn't do a lot because he was a beginner. He came and he learned. So for him, he just came and he learned about how to contribute to Ansible. He was new at it. This was new for him. But if you want to get ready, if you want to do a little bit, you know, if you want to, um, you know, prime the pump, so to speak, you can do some learning labs like Kareem mentioned. You can go to Code Exchange. You can, um, you know, look at some videos on our YouTube channel. You can do all these things to get you prepped or just come. And, and, be, and be interested and go to all the sessions that you can. It's going to be really, really good for you. So look at the agenda, see who you want to talk, what you're interested in. And I know that Chloe had some more to add to this, and, and I want to pass it back to her because I think that uh, she can tell us a little bit more about what to uh, do to get ready for DevNet Create. So before, before we go to Chloe, um, I. I want to talk about you know some of the people that I get to meet because John likes to walk and talk, but I like to walk and talk too. So uh, I just got back from Cisco Live Melbourne where I got to meet 
some of our top partners in Australia and New Zealand. And the really neat thing about being part of the DevNet community is that you know, you're, you're not just working just your company with Cisco and then this other partner company with Cisco. Partners are finding content in um, the partner ecosystem and collaborating among themselves. And that's super, super awesome. So shout out to, um, you know, OutcomeX and Local Measure and the work that they've been doing together with Cisco technology and collaborating, partners collaborating among themselves. So Chloe, can you give us some more examples of what you're seeing in the partner ecosystem exchange? And I'd love to get some examples from you too, Alex. Uh, yeah, so I would love to actually add on the sure. whole collaborative piece. I mean, I think that this is such an important aspect that we've, um, you know, brought into light within DevNet, which is the code exchange aspect. So being able, you know, we have this community of over half a million members, right? Hopefully 600K by the time we hit Cisco Live. Um, and they're building code, we're writing code, Cisco's writing code, our community's writing code, and this whole aspect is, is being able, I think there's a huge aspect of writing code that is collaborative. So to be able to post that into a place where you, someone else can go and find it, or you can fork it, um, and you can push to it, and you can create these you know, repos that are growing, um, and everyone is learning together is such a powerful aspect. So when we talk about code exchange being for both individual developers, we're also talking about it as a resource for our partners to go in um, and find things that are being built, find gap areas where we can solve problems based off of where there's already code that exists um, and that people are building now. Also, it is a really great tool to show, and I, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna sound so lame, but to show your street cred kind of in a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Like Karine's> <laughs> Cream's got a ton of street cred, can't keep up. Um, <laughs> just across the board, you got street cred. Cocky. Um, so, <laughs> that's Cream. Um, so, oh, I lost my train of thought, thanks. <laughs> Um, yeah, so so for our partners though, um, to be able, and I, I thought this was a really cool example actually, um, that we had partners that were building uh, WebEx, so I worked in Collab before, building WebEx Teams bots, mm -hmm. posting them there just to show what the power of what they're capable of doing as a way to generate business on their end. Yeah, we built something, like we're capable of it, now yeah. come to us and we can customize that just for you. Um, so I think that is a really cool aspect that you can leverage code exchange as well. Um, and then, you know, that posting, if you did build something, can also go onto the ecosystem exchange, where this is where I said that's where those solutions can be posted. Um, and that's how you can also draw an audience in and show your customers, you know, hey, I, this is what I'm capable of building, here's some code that proves it. Here's actually it listed in a catalog and you can reach out and you know further that business relationship along those lines as well. So those two code exchange and ecosystem exchange can work hand in hand for our partner community. So what else are you seeing in the partner community and maybe what you would like to see more of? Um, I, honestly, for me, I think it's just seeing more of kind of what we're already seeing, which okay. is, um, you know, before we had all this, this was a little bit of a tough thing for partners to negotiate because you know, every partner's different, every customer's different. And as amazing uh, you know, our Cisco portfolio is, we can't do everything, right? So we have to require or we have to rely on our partners uh, to basically help craft those customized solutions for our customers. And very few partners can do everything A to Z. So the opportunity for our resellers to partner with each other uh, to create those custom outcomes for the customers is really really what we're looking for more of. And it's, it's platforms like this that actually better facilitate that. And it's events like Create that you can actually meet some of your fellow uh, partner resellers and compare notes and uh, see if there's some synergies in terms of what you're developing versus what they're developing. Um, not every partner competes with each other. We have a lot of partners that collaborate with each other and they work together. And uh, you know, people do business with people, so what better way to get to know somebody to, at an event like this? I like that people do business with people. They do. Mm -hmm. They do. I mean, um, and going back to what John said, go take a look at the agenda. Go to developer.cisco.com slash devnet create. And also, when you're there, take a look at the speakers, because many of the speakers are partners. Many of the speakers are from our uh, sales organization who can put you in touch with partners. So definitely do that. But if you're not going to be able to make it to devnet create this year, I want to go back to our community leader, Diaria, to tell us about what other events she's seeing out there that can help people get started in this programmability journey. Thanks, Sylvia. 
So a little pivot kind of, so not really a ton of events, but things that people can do to, um, to get started if they're not able to attend DevNet Create this year. Um, we can't overstate how awesome code exchange is. Um, you've, heard, you've heard three or four or five, or maybe everybody, <laughs> talk about how awesome code exchange is. Um, definitely use that as a resource. It's a great way to see what other people are doing in the industry, what some of our developer advocates are coming up with. Um, it's, it's just a great place to start as a baseline. Um, there are a ton of learning labs and learning tracks that are available on developer.cisco.com. Uh, Kareem said it earlier, that is the first place to start. That is the gold mine amongst all of them. You will find everything that you need to, you, everything that you need to know is going to be built into that page. Um, the sandbox is also a great resource. Don't break what, you know, don't, don't break your own stuff, break our stuff, use our sandboxes and test out some of the code that you, you've had a chance to learn. Um, get into some of our um, webinar series. We've got a Net DevOps season two webinar series that's happening right now. Um, we've got videos. So if you want to catch up on pages and pages and pages and pages of videos that we've done from uh, past Cisco Live events, uh, past DevNet Create events. Um, and then also, if you're not really sure where to start, uh, developer.cisco.com slash start now. Um, you know, start with your technology, start with another technology. Um, it'll really give you the start that you need to, to jump on your own path. Uh, and you don't have to be limited to what you already know. The great thing about DevNet is it's here so that you can learn a little bit of everything, you know, to keep yourself competitive in the market that we already have. Um, so those are just a few things that um, people can, can do. You know, you can't come to DevNet Create. We will have some videos uh, available of some of the sessions that we're going to have this year. We do have the sessions from last year and the year before that are available uh, from our past DevNet creates. So, you know, definitely don't miss out on any of the opportunities that we have to learn um, because there's just there's just so much out there. And, you know, again, I'd like to reiterate that, you know, DevNet's not just a one and done. Like, you can keep coming back. We keep refreshing our information. Um, reach out to our developer adv advocates and, you know, team members on social media. We're super active on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, you know, anywhere you can find us. Uh, we're, we're super active. Uh, so just, just come find us. Holler if you're not going to be at Cisco Live, or not Cisco Live, Dev Dev Create, and, uh, you know, we'll be here. And, and, and thanks, Dioria. And just, just to add to that, so if, if you're a partner or you're a customer and you can't do any of that and you're, you're the type of person that would like to hang around with other people to just kind of code and learn, we have what one of our most successful um, DevNet asset is DevNet Express. Right, so you find out when where is your nearest DevNet Express. We run these guys all over the world. Um, go to developer.cisco.com. Um, we have an events tab for you there. You're going to see the list of DevNet Expresses that are being offered, and sign up for one. Um, it's 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 available for our cus customers and partners, Cisco internal even, um, if if you're looking to get started with DevNet. So um, this is a great asset also for you. We have a question from the audience, Kareem, for you. What is your favorite sandbox? Ooh, I'm a bit biased. So the C480. The, no, sorry, Chloe. <laughs> um, the, <laughs> one of my favorite sandboxes that I always use, and it's, it's great, um, is the DNA Center sandbox. Um, we have about, I want to say, eight. Two of them that are always on, so you don't have to make any reservation. Um, so you can just head over to the, our Sandbox page, find out the, the two that are always on, get the credential, log in, play. If you're looking to play with Cisco uh, DNA Center, um, you'll have full access to it. You'll have access to the platform where you can learn about the APIs and what you could do with it. And then you can head over to developer.cisco.com and see what we've done with it. So um, that, that's a really, really clean and well-built Sandbox. Um, the DNA Center. Right. Can you give us the one minute summary of what Cisco DNA Center is for people that haven't gotten started with it yet? Cisco DNA Center is a network controller that automates and controls your entire infrastructure. It's as simple as you can get. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. You can rest for a while. The right. next question is for Mandy. Um, this question comes in from YouTube. And Mandy, right. the question is How can DevOps and network automation tools help service providers? boost their network, and improve customer service and customer experience? So it's a service mm. provider question. That is a multi-part, multi-faceted question, for sure. <laughs> um, so the, the core of that that I think um, that I would touch on first is 
how does DevOps in whatever organization you're working in eventually help improve customer experience? And you know, we are a big a proponent of the idea of dev and ops coming together and those teams working closer, closely together speeds up feedback and feeds up, speeds up deployment loops. So you're able to get new features out to your customers faster. And in DevNet, we extend that to say it's dev and ops and network coming together and security coming together and everyone starting to you know, use similar tool sets, talk the same language, have the same vocabulary around DevOps workflows and tools. So it's really just in, you know, whether service provider or enterprise or data center, it's taking that those core principles of DevOps and being able to you know, have those faster iteration loops and be able to respond to customer needs faster. And that's really what we're working towards with all of our automation goals in DevNet. So uh, we have another question from the audience. I'm asking them uh, you know, back to back because we are getting questions. So make sure you get your question in now. So this is about um, you know, code exchange. Can you give us more details about um, you know, open source and licenses and any requirements that you need in order to get your code into code exchange? Yeah, so definitely. There are a few requirements in order to actually submit your code into code exchange, um, which it's developer.cisco.com, remember that, um, slash code exchange. So you go, and you'll also be able to navigate there from the home page. So um, you do need a README. And you do need so to make, make sure the code is actually usable in a sense that it's not going to take someone um, a decade to figure out how to even run it. Um, and you need um, to show that you do maintain it. So there needs to be some evidence that someone is there on the other side. Um, and we do work with making sure that almost all of the code is under open source licenses, the common open source licenses. There are a few that aren't, and those are because they're under a Cisco proprietary license. Um, and this was kind of a back and forth the team had with you know, having the option to not show code at all versus have a restricted license. We went with have the restricted license. Um, but you will find, I think, probably 90% of the code is on open source licensing. And, and we have, if you're looking to submit, we have a template for you, um, as, you know, that guides you through how to get your GitHub uh, repo into code exchange. Um, I don't know the, the the link off the top of my head, but you can tweet me and I'll share it out after this. It's no problem. Oh, people are tweeting. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where's your phone? <laughs> Turn your phone back on. So, um, for those of you who have never seen Matt and Kareem side by side, they're practically the same person. So, he'll, the answer will probably be Kareem, but I have to ask Matt. Matt, what are you most excited about when it comes to DevNet Create? Sylvie stole my thunder. That was going to be the culmination of my die tread. <laughs> um, yeah, seeing Kareem obviously is a highlight of any event that we do together, so I am looking forward to that um, in all of my DevNet team. Um, but really, uh, there, you know, through all of this conversation today, you've been inundated with all of the things that we're offering, and I'm actually really excited about all of them. Um, I personally have had my hand in uh, building out some demos for Meraki where you can actually get hands on with deploying a network, um, a network stack and actually seeing the equipment in front of you as it lights up and connect to the SSID. Um, we'll have some very interesting demos during the keynotes that, that will be uh, super fun to, to check out. Um, John mentioned and talked at length about the uh, workshops. Um, I'm, I'm running one of those too. Um, so I'm excited to uh, try out some new material that I have. Um, but I'm also excited to see some of the new and interesting things that um, you know our community is doing. So uh, we've been working closely with our wireless networking business unit lately and they're, they've solved a, a pretty hard problem recently and they'll be providing a talk on um, on uh, how to collect a lot of interesting information from a large data stream. Um, so that, that is one talk that I'm pretty excited about. Um, the night of the first day, so Wednesday night, uh, we're also having a Create After Dark. Um, and so I'm a big fan of, of food and drink as well. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, celebrating the entire week um, with, uh, with a party with networking with all of our attendees and our speakers and our teammates as well. So, um, I mean, to, to, to nail it down to one thing is very hard. I'm pretty, pretty excited about the, the week as a whole. Now I just got to get a bunch of code done to make sure that I can enjoy it. <laughs> 
So are you excited about seeing Matt, Kareem? I mean, it, it is always the highlight of my week, seeing Matt. Um, <laughs> the sperm but, hands is really <laughs> yeah, strong. <Going> strong here. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm actually really excited about Camp Create. Um, Matt was allowed me to become a mentor. I'm not sure why he would do that, but he allowed me to become one of the mentors on, on his team, on the teams that he selected. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with these guys and um, putting putting an idea together and, and building it out. So I get to geek out um, at, at Create. Um, I'm also excited about meeting our community members, right? That we see these faces around Cisco, we see them at DevNet Create. Um, it's kind of like a once in a year, once every year type of thing. So we hey, what have you done? What kind of so networking with these guys and, and meeting them to see where they are now, what they've worked on and what they're working on. So uh, that's always exciting for me. I want to give a shout out to our systems engineering organization because some of the SCs who just came to check things out the first year, the second year are speaking on the third year. And you know that's, that's really neat to see that people come to DevNet Create and say, it's great to listen, but maybe I can be the one sharing next time around. We're getting a lot of questions for you, Kareem, so I'll make sure to pass them on to you so you can answer them. Just to give you an idea, people want more cases about um, Cisco DNA Center. Where can, can they go and find these? Questions about are there certifications for DevOps? So uh, do check your Twitter later. I, I want to bring it back to Alex. Uh, we're running out of time. It's been fantastic, and we hope you will join us at DevNet Create. But before we go, I just want Alex to tell you again about these great big prizes for partners if they do what? $200,000, first place, $50,000 for the second place. And uh, really what you have to do is just create a unique solution um, that really highlights the strength of Cisco's portfolio and your mastery of uh, APIs and programmability. Uh, if you tweet at me, I can send you some more information on kind of where to go to uh, double click on that. Um, also for you partners, reach out to your local account teams, ask them for some additional information, and they'll be happy to help you. But uh, the submissions are going to be due here, I think, in about four or five months, so you got plenty of time to work on this stuff. Um, but Jose, if you're out there, man, you got to defend the title, because there's <laughs> a lot of people coming for you. Oh, man. But, uh, but it's going to be exciting, absolutely. I'm so glad that people have time to get their ideas ready. So come and ask your questions at DevNet Create. Also, it'll be here before you know it. We will have the new DevNet Zone at Cisco Live in San Diego. So we're really looking forward to seeing all of you there. And remember, this is for the global community, for everyone. We do have more questions, but we'll have to answer them online. Thank you to everyone who tuned in live. And if you're watching the recording, thank you so much for watching all the way through the end. Bye.